I probably get asked about helping salespeople explain the math to a customer probably as one of my top five requests. And so I'm creating a series of videos. In fact, there's five videos. This is number three, hold on, number three. Number three of five. And uh, if you've missed the last two, sorry, go back and catch the other two. Number one, I talked about the language change that I make. Number two, I talked about how to explain the price or the value price of the car more clearly. This video, number three, is gonna be on the trade in the vehicle the customer is selling to us so this video is all about that and here's another sell psychology strategy to help you make the math make sense to your customers so first and foremost you would remember hopefully that I use the word the vehicle you're selling to us or the phrase sorry the vehicle you're selling to us more than I use the phrase trade in or trade in value I don't like to talk about trade, I talk about selling to us. So I'll ask the customer, do you have a vehicle you're considering replacing or possibly selling to us? I don't say trading in. So once again, out on the lot, the language I use out on the lot is consistent with the language I'm going to be using at the worksheet moment. So out on the lot, I might ask you, I might say, you know, hey, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. I know you're looking at XYZ new vehicle. Are you looking at replacing your current vehicle or possibly even selling it to us? That's the question. Are you looking to add, replace, and possibly even sell to us? Would you like to get a value on your vehicle as part of your shopping process? Would, help, would it help to know what you would get for it if you sold it private party or even if you sold it to us? These are the kinds of questions I ask. This is the kind of language I use out on the lot referring to the customer's current vehicle. So I'll say, tell me what you're currently driving. Is it important you get a value on that? Would you like to know what it might be worth if you sold it private party or even if you sold it to us? I don't say the word trade it. Now, once again, this language is different. The customer's not used to hearing it, so it's a type of pattern interruption, right? I'm interrupting the customer's pattern of thought so I can introduce a new idea or a new emotion with new language. Now, when I get into the deal, when I'm starting to now present the numbers, the same thing happens there. Keep in mind that I've already told the customer how we appraise a vehicle. This would have happened earlier. I tell them how we establish a fair market value on the vehicle they're selling to us. So asking the customer out on the lot, saying something like this, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. Have you had your vehicle professionally appraised so that you can get a fair market value and know what the value would be if you sold it to a dealer like us? The customer will then answer, I've done some research online, or yes, ABC Motors has already told me what they'll do. It doesn't really matter what they say. I'm going to always establish what we do here and how we will help them. So I'll say, you know, I'm glad you've done that research or I'm glad you've had ABC Motors look at it. Let me share with you what you can expect from us. In order to provide a fair market value for all of our customers, we're going to look at several variables on your car in order to determine its market value. And now what I'm going to do is share with the customer the main variables that determine the market value of a pre-owned car. Here's what those variables are. The first one is its condition. We're going to take a close look at the condition of the vehicle. The next one is its history. How old it is, the miles, the equipment, and the supply or demand of that vehicle in the marketplace. So there's six primary variables concerning the customer's current car that will determine its value. Now, I like to use at least four or five of these variables when I'm talking to a customer. It's not necessary that you list all six, but it is necessary that you list several of them so the customer understands what determines his or her market value on the vehicle. Now, if you wanna just use four of them, you can use history, how old it is, miles, and equipment. And the memory word would be the word home. There's no place like home, and the customer's current vehicle is like their second home. It's where they spend all their time. So remembering that there's no place like home, when a customer is being explained for the first time the value of their vehicle, I'm going to say history, how old it is, miles, and equipment, H-O-M-E, the home of the customer is also the variables I will discuss with them. If you want to add condition and add supply, you would end up with chomes. So it's the condition, the history, how old it is, the miles and the equipment, and of course the supply and demand. I let the customer know that up front so that when I present the number for the first time of the value, the fair market value of the vehicle they are selling to us, 
Whenever there's a concern about that, I'll always redirect the conversation back to what I already told them, which was, sir, as you can remember, or you might remember from our conversation, the reason the value is what it is, is because of its, and then I will identify the areas where they would have lost value, possibly in its condition, possibly in its lack of equipment, possibly in its higher miles, possibly in its age, possibly in its supply and demand factor that it's not a specialty or unique vehicle. I'm gonna find a place, possibly it's even in the history of the vehicle because it has multiple owners or at one point it had been in an accident. All these variables are determining or influencing its value and we wanna make sure we clearly communicate to the customer how we arrived at the value of their vehicle. Now, once again, I must always remind, if you're a Cell College University subscriber and you're on my online university, all of this content is in there. Please go in there, take the quizzes, take the content. I go into a lot more detail. If you're not, stay tuned. This is video three of five, and we've got two more to go on what makes the math make sense to your customer. I hope you're enjoying these. Thanks for interacting with me here online and in social media. Again, I'm Jonathan Dawson with a six-minute Cellcology strategy, and we'll talk to you all real soon. Thanks so much. Bye.